I'm James Binoff. I'm the owner of James Binoff Reptiles and Invertebrates or reptilesandinvertebrates.com.au. Uh, I got into breeding uh, tarantulas, uh, scorpions many, many years ago, uh, probably back when I was maybe three or four, lifting rocks and just collecting things out in the bush, uh, to what it is today where we have over 200 adult tarantulas and thousands and thousands of scorpions. Okay, so tell us, how did the breeding start? Um, probably full time, maybe f say eight or nine years ago, um, we started producing a few tarantulas. Uh, back when the hobby wasn't really all that big, I think in the first years we produced maybe six, seven hundred baby uh, tarantulas. And then from there we sort of, you know, sold them all off and it took the entirety of the year. Whereas now we're producing for over a hundred pet shops as well as the hobby to where we can't even keep up. This year we produced, bought and sold over seven and a half thousand baby scorpions uh, and tarantulas uh, to where we are now just about to hit the breeding season and we've got nothing left for sale. So this has been three expos this year as well as uh, all our online sales, the launch of our new website, which is the reptilesandinvertebrates.com.au, uh, which has an online store which people can purchase from and go from there. Awesome. So tell me, have you seen anyone conquer their fears of spiders since starting your business? Yeah, probably over the 10 years that we've been doing this, the amount of people that go, oh, I'm so petrified of a spider, what, what do I do, where do I go, how do I start? And we say, look, go small. A little baby spider is not scary compared to a big, huge strenus or something like a goliath. So when they get it and they pull it out and there's this tiny little baby spider and they're like, oh wow, it's really not that bad. And then it grows with them to this big strenus or big goliath and they're like, wow, I can handle this. And they're like, five, six years ago, I was petrified. I couldn't even look at it when you know, I'd break down, I'd have a panic attack. Yeah. A huntsman in the house running across a wall would send him into a fear, but now, they, they can pick them up, they can move them outside, they can do all that kind of stuff. You know, they realise that these things aren't what they've been taught to fear. They really are beautiful species of animals that can be kept quite easily. They are very misunderstood and I know myself I am quite, not so petrified, but I'm a bit afraid of spiders to say the least. It, I can deal with little ones, but when it comes to the bigger ones, I remember having one in my garage and it was it was quite large, it was just a huntsman, I'm pretty sure, but opening it up to do do some of the reptile stuff and there was one on the wall and I've just, yeah, nah, just goosebumps and everything. So it's gonna be interesting today. The next question is, am I able to hold one today? Look, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and get one out for you. We're gonna try and conquer that fear today. Perfect. So uh, I think it's time that we sort of put you out of your comfort zone and we get I'm you ready. holding a tarantula. <laughs> Don't even me. I won't do it. <laughs> All right, so I'm about to hold a spider right now. I'm freaking out to say the least. So I hope you're there for support for me because one of the things that I want to do is conquer my fears of holding a spider. So I'm going to do that for you in this episode and show you that they're not as bad as what people seem. Yeah, so this is what uh, the hobby knows as a Selenotypus sp3. Yeah. So they are a relatively uh, calmer species uh, to handle rather than giving you, say, a Cotsman yep. or, say, an Exivale, which aren't. So you ready? I'm ready. Let's, let's do it. I'm ready as I'll ever be. So what we'll do is you just move the back end here, nice and gently. Doesn't want to play the game. And there we go. Now, I never thought that I'd be holding a spider like this. As I said, I do freak out a fair bit, but it's not moving too much. And I am safe to say that it's it's because it's quite cool, right? Yeah, it is quite cold today, uh, which has helped. Obviously, the, the warmer the uh, temperature, the more the metabolism's firing. Yeah. And obviously, the body keeps going. But see, they don't seem as bad as what people play them out to be. It's, I dare say you wouldn't have to hold them as much as, as other species, like your reptiles and stuff. You, I guess you can, but it's... You can a... handle them more. Uh, the drama you're going to have is obviously stress. With tarantulas, the more they get stressed, they start to do what's called balding. Uh, yep. So they will drop a lot of their hairs, as well as the fur that goes across their abdomen. Yep. Uh, which then, 
you're going to have issues with molts uh, and potentially deaths uh, from stress when they don't eat. It's like anything, if you overstress the animal too much, then it's just, just going to go into meltdown and you don't want that to happen, especially when you've got a cool little critter like this. And I still can't believe I'm holding it. <laughs> the heart. Hey? The heart's pumping a bit, <laughs> but it's like anything. I, I When I first got into reptiles and stuff like that, it was the same thing, you know. Snakes, I didn't really know much about them, and now, now I'm starting to get more into this, and you never know, I might leave you something here today. <laughs> Look at that cute little toes. <laughs> I love it. And how big do these guys get? That's a fully grown female. She won't get any bigger. They do continue to grow as they molt throughout their lives, uh, but it's such a minute amount that you'll never, ever notice it once it gets to uh, a size like this. And she's very relaxed. What a beautiful creature. I'd have to say uh, funnel webs are the current flavour for me. Um, I don't know what it is about them. I think it's just the the aggression and the misunderstanding pretty badass. around the hobby as well as the wider communities where people go, oh, it's a funnel web, you know, get rid of it. You can't have those sort of things. And I just, they're amazing. They've got such a dark, rich black. They're shiny uh, and they've got that attitude they're just, very animated. So, yeah. and you look at a lot of the species, especially in the tubs, they have these really, really fine, uh, like strings. And when the crickets crawl over them, it sends these little vibrations through and they come out and they know exactly where in the tub that that cricket is just to get that feed. So they're just an absolutely awesome, wicked creature. They're very cool. How many species of these invertebrates do you actually have right now? Oh, look. With the wife present, we're probably going to say I have actually got no idea. Um, wow. I try not to put a number on things because as soon as you put a number on things, uh, they start going. When did that come in? When did you get yeah. that? <laughs> How long have you had that? Um, I'd say a fair. We've large got collection. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We've got quite a bit yeah. um, spread across. I think maybe around about a dozen scorpion species maybe a little bit more. With the tarantulas, they'd be over 20. Cool. Yeah. So we do like to, um, well, I do like to collect them. Um, and it's really hard, especially when you start getting in different various uh, spinal web species, red backs, uh, tarantula species, the numbers really stack up pretty quick. Oh, of course. So the main two species that we work with are the Selenotypus and the Phylogia species. Yep. Uh, and that's, that's my main passion. And you breed them as well and supply them to pet shops, as you've said. So you've got to have that stock there to breed and... That's correct, and yeah. give it to the pet shops. I think the hardest part is like growing them up to try and get males. Uh, with a lot of our dramas, it's not so much growing them up, it's actually producing the males from what we grow up. You know, yeah. We have an abundance of females. But it's one of those things where we sort of rely on the hobby um, to either say, hey, look, we've got some males, you know, do you mind breeding them and you know sending me a video, which we have you know on our YouTube channel. I think there's about 30 or 40 matings that we've put up just from this year alone, and they uh, go quite well too, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I think we've had one go pretty bad where a female uh, grabbed a male, but he was getting towards the end of his life, and I think that the female picked up on that pheromone of him being a weaker male and not having that you know stability that he would have had to really get in there and mate with her. So I think she's just gone nah, You're not worth that. Uh, you know, time to put into producing, yeah. uh, as well as you're not going to probably produce a good uh, offspring for future yeah. sustainability of their um, species. Well, either that or he didn't ask politely. <laughs> well, you just never know. <laughs> so these, all these are little strands, and they all send back signals into this main cocoon web that goes through there. So these all move every single part of this web system. How do you feel about James owning all these crazy critters? I'm not a mass, well, at the start I wasn't a massive fan, but they grow on you a little bit. <laughs> um, not a fan of cockroaches or spiders, but you know, you get there with him pushing you. Um, we've got two kids that I want to grow up having no fear of bugs or spiders or snakes or anything. So I've kind of got to put myself out there and try and get used to having them but he loves it and I want to support him so look at you go though this uh, is this really a like cockroach <laughs> this is a big, it's, I know it's not a house cockroach so I'm happy holding it but I mean they are pretty cool they're very cool I love little legs and they just cruise they're just so different you, you, you don't see them 
often at no. all either. So there's something completely different, something that really keeps you interested in the hobby. Exactly. I mean, yeah, they just like the head on them. You probably can't see the head, but they're just so like I can't get it to stay there. It's just a little unit on it, like a little helmet. It's yeah, like a little, looks like got armor on. But they just keep going. It's not going to bite me. It's not going to hurt me. So there's no fear. Now, I know you had a great success with the Wollongong Reptile Expo that you did yourself. Yeah. Now, how do you think an invertebrate expo would go in Australia? Look, one day I'd like to see it to get to that size, but I don't think that the hobby itself supports something like that. And I personally think that the invertebrate side comes hand in hand with the reptile community as well as that, because a lot of people will have a scorpion and then all of a sudden that turns into getting a reptile and then it turns into getting you know, 20 snakes and 50 scorpions and 100 tarantulas. Like, it seems to boom hand in hand from each other. So I'd like to see that the, like the reptile hobby itself sort of takes on the invertebrate hobby as well. And these expos, they boom together uh, as a one whole expo rather than saying, let's have a tarantula expo and let's have that, you know, let's get everybody together and let's get them learning about, you know, spiders and scorpions and, you know, we've got the venomous shows at the expos. So, Let's start actually educating as a whole and moving forward rather than saying, let's keep to ourselves and let's do this little tiny thing over here and you guys can do your thing over there. Exactly right. All right, so there you have it. This is James Bindoff and all his creepy crawlies. I'm glad that I held a spider today, conquered my fears, I think. And how did you like it, Chelsea? It was really cool. I loved holding the spider. So it was a great day, great experience. and. Thanks for today. Nah, any it's a time. pleasure coming out. More than welcome. Thank you. Let's do it all again. <laughs> Thank you. It was a big, big day. <laughs> Until next time, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check out James Bindoff. He's got some amazing stuff for sale that you can buy online. He ships six days a week, is it? Uh, we do Monday to Wednesday uh, all around Australia. Um, and we try to send to Perth and all that kind of stuff uh, Mondays and Tuesdays just in case it gets held up a day. Uh, with the express post so perfect so you can grab something and it'll be express post as well check it out <laughs>